Well, good evening, guys. So today, today we'll start. Today we'll talk, we'll see some uh, the map ad, map, advanced map reduce concepts, uh, which includes um, uh, which includes topics like combiner, partitioner, and yes, local runner. And then we will also see in this setup cleanup methods uh, what what uh, where we can use them, what is the use, and where we have to use them. And then we'll see how to pass the parameters, which I think we have already done uh, passing the parameters or I think passing the Hadoop related parameters, which we have done. But if I want to pass the custom parameters, then uh, how to pass the custom parameters uh, to our MapReduce jobs that we'll see. Then we'll see this to a cache. And here only we'll see the concept of the map site join. So let's see. So we'll start with the, the combiner. So if you see this, we will first would like to understand the motivation of um, uh, first first and the foremost we would like to see what are the problems and then uh, how to mitigate those problems then we'll understand the real motivation and when we have to go for a combiner or when we have to go for a partitioner then. so let's say there are 100 map tasks running so you have 100 machines like this and 100 map tasks are running of course you know that each block will be taken by map task assuming the input split size is equal to the block size so you have this map tasks and I'm saying this is only one reducer. So if you see the map output, we know that the map output gets transferred over the network and goes to the reducer machine. So there are a lot of map tasks, so a lot of intermediate key value pairs which will be emitted from the mappers that has to be transferred to the network. So the first problem is a lot of network band consumption. The challenge number one. And the second challenge is the reducer because you know that uh, the output of the mapper also stores on the respective local file system then it is transferred to the network and it also and gets stored onto the reducer local file system so there is a one reducer uh, and all the intermediate key value pairs from all the mappers are going to be stored onto reducer local file system or if you have a single reducer so there are two challenges here so first thing foremost we'll see about the first challenge one that there are a lot of network bandwidth consumption so a lot of network bandwidth consumption which leads to the slowness which leads to performance bottleneck because it will take time to travel the intermediate key value pairs right over the network so what is the source of network bandwidth consumption is nothing but the key value pairs and if i want to minimize how do i and the problem is a challenge you know it's a network bandwidth consumption now the question is how do we minimize the network bandwidth consumption so in order to minimize the network bandwidth consumption, the question is how you gonna minimize the key value pairs, right? If you, the source, so you have the network, network bandwidth consumption, right? Network bandwidth consumption is because of your is because of your key value pairs key value pairs in fact a lot of key value pairs transfer to the network so that's so how do we so if we can minimize the key value pairs that are transferred across the network then network bandwidth consumption then will be due right network bandwidth consumption will be reduced so that is the motivation that how can we minimize the key value pairs or in other words how can we generate a less key value pairs or in other words you would like to understand that the mappers how can we do some kind of aggregation at the mapper at the mapper and that will reduce the number of key values that are transferred across the network right so if i am able to do some kind of an aggregation at the mapper side and then send my aggregate key value pair over to the reducer for the final reduction or final aggregation then that will improve the overall performance so let me see this so let us let us see this so you have um, so you have 10 sorry you have a hundred machines here uh, or you can say hundred blocks of data are residing in a hundred different machine hundred separate machines and each of the map so each of the block is taken by your map task so you have a hundred map tasks running 
and here the situation is that each of the map task is processing 10 10 is giving you 10 key value pairs so and the key value pairs are hello one so from this mapper you have a 10 hello comma one key value pairs from this mapper you have 10 hello comma one key value pairs likewise from all the mappers now the question here it is asked is how many key value pairs are transferred so from one machine you have a 10 so from 100 machine you will have 100 key value pairs that are transferred across the network okay right so 100 key value pairs then you have a grouping operation you know that when it comes to DSM, um you have grouping operation so all the keys are same so you will have a key and 100 value and sorry thousand values i mean so 10 into you have a hundred thousand key value pairs so you have a thousand one cm so in the reduce method i hope i hope you have done the what count problem so in the what count problem you know that you have written a for loop so in that that in order to do the summation the for loop has to iterate a uh, thousand times to produce whatever the summation right so this is the current situation now this is the source of the network so this is a lot of network bandwidth consumption is happening here over here now how can i reduce the key value pair so that it will reduce the network bandwidth consumption so i have told you that can we do some kind of an aggregation so here if you see hello comma one hello comma 10 so instead of that i we do the aggregation at the mapper set hello comma 10 hello comma 10 hello comma 10 likewise you have each of the mappers have done the aggregation on that part so how many key value pairs it will be transferred this time so you have one key value from each match each mapper and you have 100 mappers running so 100 key value pairs grouping operation hello 10 comma 10 comma 1 so now you have 100 tens and now you have to iterate 100 times just 100 times to get the summation so so that means so that has actually uh, that has actually improved the performance right so if you see what exactly you are doing here don't you think you are running the individual are you here is the final reducer which is doing the summation but if you but if you see carefully are you not running the reducer logic at the mapper side to do the aggregation right small small uh, individual aggregations being done at the mapper side so are we not running the reducer at each of the mapper side the concept so this concept of running the reducer at the mapper side is known as combiner or uh, i would say to make it generic that it's not necessarily always uh, uh, you will run the reducer logic at the mapper side uh, generally that is the trend so let me just explain you that so sorry for the interruption uh, what was combiner again in layman terms you are running the reducer at the mapper side running the reducer logic at the mapper side or running reducer logic on the output of the mapper either is intermediate key value pairs before sending to reducer okay now reducer works on a key value pairs list key and a list of values key and you have a list of values b1 v2 v3 so on v100 right and then it does the summation then whatever logic you have done uh, let's say you are doing a summation so it's a key and the value is v1 plus v2 plus v3 till it goes to v100 so if you are doing a summation let's say what we are doing the same so when you when you when you when you make your reducer to run as a combiner okay then at the mapper side same kind of a key and a list of values will be generated and the reducer logic will be run at the mapper side so running the reducer logic at the mapper side is known as a combiner okay now that's one thing that's that's a general trend generally or most of the times you will make your reducer you'll make your existing reducer to run as a combiner why i have made this statement is that you can have your own combiner logic you can have your own combiner logic 
which is separated from, which is different from your reducer logic. Okay, you can have your own combiner logic, uh, which is different from reducer logic, which is which is rare and will not always work. You will understand very soon. Okay. So the motivation you have understood that why, when we have to go for a combiner, the combiner motivation is that uh, how to reduce the key value pairs that are emitted from the mapper to the reducer to in order to minimize the network bandwidth consumption. So the combiner will do the local aggregation. And this is a problem statement I have just reiterated over here on this slide. The large number of mappers will run in, will produce a large amount of intermediate data that is into a key value pair. And when this key value pairs, lot of key value pairs has to be passed to the reducer over the network. That's the first way. That means lot of network traffic and if there's a lot of network traffic then shuffling and copying. So you have to copy the mapper output to the reducer machine that will take time if there are a lot of key value pairs. As I've just explained that you have to run the reducer logic, uh, same reducer logic on the mapper machine. So you have uh, combiner is similar to reducer and combiner is also known as sometimes local reducer. So combiner combiner is also referred as local reducer or mini reducer. The reason is it runs locally on the mapper output. And the mapper output is termed as intermediate key value pairs or intermediate data. So when you do the aggregation on the mapper side, so it will, re it will reduce the number of key value pairs, right? So it will do the aggregation and then it will reduce the number of key value pairs. So it will minimize the it will minimize the uh, it will minimize the network bandwidth consumption. So combiner runs on the intermediate output of each mapper. The advantages: I it minimizes the data transfer. It speeds up the execution. How does it speeds up the execution? Because less number of key value pairs are transferred. So obviously the data will move faster over the network, reaches the data machine quickly. Copying will be faster. Sorting will be faster, and it also reduces the burden reducer. What I mean by this? Previously, if you have seen the understood the diagram, in the previous scenario when there was no combiner running, then uh, the uh, the for loop in the reducer logic has to iterate many times. So in our previous example, it ran thousand times. But when we did the aggregation on the mapper side, then we have seen that number of key value pairs were less, and then we also saw that then a number of iterations in that case it will be reduced. So it will it was hundred times, right? Okay, so. Uh, combiner has the same signature as a reducer class. So when you want to write your combiner, so as I've just explained you that that com uh, you are going to uh, make your, a general trend is you have to make your existing reducer run as a combiner, but no one stops you to write your own combiner logic. So the reason is if I want to write my, how do you write a reducer class? You write a reducer class like this, public class, Let's say if you are running a word count reducer, writing a word count reducer, so you say public class word count reducer extends reducer class. You give k1, v1, k2, v2, and then you override the reduce method public void reduce. Then you override the reduce method. Okay. Now, combiner has the same signature as a reducer class, which means that if you want to run, make your own, if you want, if you want to write the combiner different than your existing reducer, then you don't have to do anything special. You have to just, you have to uh, have override You have to extend. You have to you have to extend from the same reducer class. What so and you have to override the same reduce method. So this is how it will look like.
So you, if you see both of them, at the vertical producer, actual section from producer class, the combiner will also extends from your producer class. And in the job, in the actual job, if you remember when we are when we written the job job dot set reducer class. If you remember right, set reducer class, and you used to give your what count reducer dot class. So if I want to, let's say, if you want to make your existing reducer class to run as a combiner, then you will suggest say job job dot set. There's a method by name combiner class job dot set combiner class what count reducer. So you have to just say that job dot set. In case if you want to specify a different class, like you don't you don't want your existing reducer class to run as a combiner, and you but instead of that you want to give a separate class what called combiner, which has a different logic, you have to specify like this. But generally, please understand. I will again make a statement that here, which you have to find the answer for this. Generally, you will not make your existing reducer. Generally, you will not make or in the generally you will make existing reducer to run as a combiner. You will not write a different combiner. The reason is combiner may or may not run. Okay, even if you set in your driver code like this job dot set combiner class but reducer dot class. Okay, so uh, so it will not guarantee the framework will not guarantee the combiner will run. Combiner may run one time, combiner may run two times, combiner may run hundred times on the same mapper machine. Please understand what I'm trying to say right now is uh, if this is a scenario. Okay, and let's say in the code you have specified job dot set combiner class. Okay, so there are hundred machines. So it 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 might so happen that on this machine, combiner might not run at all. And this combiner may run once. On this combiner may run twice. In this combiner may run hundred times. In this combiner may run zero times at all. So it's not guaranteed that the reducer, the logic which you have written in the combiner, or you let's say if you are, uh, whatever the combiner logic, it may run, may not run, and if it is running, it might run more than once also. So that's why you will not make a different combiner logic altogether. You might want to make your existing reducer to run as a combiner always, okay? But why it is, why, why it has been designed like that, you, this is an assignment that you have to figure it out that why the combiner runs, why this behavior is like this, that combiner may run, may not run, and if it is running, it might run more than once also. So when, when this situation can occur. So I'll give you a clue later that how to, uh, that why this, why this design or decision, or why this, this behavior is, uh, combi this behavior of combiner is designed like this. Okay, now coming back, can I make all my existing reducer to run as a combiner? That's another question. Because you have seen that aggregation is done on the mapper, right? So see this, aggregation is done on the mapper, and then the aggregated thing, aggregated output key value pairs from the mapper is transferred across the, is, is given to the reducer for the final aggregation. And understand the reducer logic here on the reducer machine and all the mapper machine because reducer, because just now we understood reducers, uh, mini reducer, that is each, the reducer logic is running on each of the mapper side. So you're doing the aggregation at the each point and then again you're doing the final aggregation. So the question comes that, um, can all the existing reducer can run as a combiner or is there any restriction? <coughs> so you need to understand that operations which are associative or commutative in nature, like summation, multiplication, min operation, max operations. Those are associative and commutative. So like what count problem you are doing, right? So the summation. So uh, those kinds of operation which are associative and commutative, you can very well make those reducer to run as a combiner. But um, if you have done average word length problem, since average operation is not associative commutative, so you will not be able to perform this. 
right so you need to uh, so you need to understand that only the operations which are associated in commutative they can you will actually make that um uh, reduce certain as a combiner nobody stops you if the operation is not commutative or associative to make that reduce as a combiner but but make sure that your results will be wrong you have to just say this okay so this is the clue when i have told you that uh, framework decides whether to run the command or not though you have to understand that whether you if you have specified in your driver code that i want to run my reducer to run as a combiner then it's not going to the combiner will run okay combiner may run more than once and it depends on two properties which you have to figure it out by reading the literature that um what 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 is what 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 is this with two, these two property io dot sort dot factor the default value is 10 and io dot sort dot mb the default value is 100 mb okay you have to figure it out now if you have understood this let me ask you a question the question is Which of the following classes can act as a combiner? Now the classes, so you need to understand that uh, and you need to spend some time that which of these classes can act as your combiner? Producer, where T stands for text. Case I stands for I W stands for intraitable. T stands for I W and T. The I have specified input key, input value, text, intraitable, intraitable text. This is one. This is for the work on problem, right? Any problem, not as a work on problem. It's a generic reducer. So if you have understood the combined logic, you need to understand that whether which of this class can. So as I've told you, right? So these are the five options given to you and you have to figure it out um, that which of these reducer classes can act as a combiner. So obviously this, there, there is as such no combiner class, so this is ruled out. This is just for confusion, it is just like, I just want, you wanted to understand, right? So this is anyways not required, combiner is anyways fine. This is ruled out because there is as such no combiner class. Now you have a four options left and out of these four options, there are two correct options. Uh, which are the correct options, you only figured out which are the correct op uh, operations. And which one do you think? Which one is correct? One? No. What happened? Why you are saying one? Have you drawn the diagram by the way? No, I'm just mapping the intermediate key value pairs. So? So when the, I'm not given the mapper, right? So you have to assume that it is coming, the mapper is giving you some, the mapper key value pairs are coming from what? This is mapper output key value pair only, right? And this is reducer output key value pair. Yes. Draw a diagram quick. You can very well. I cannot draw the diagram, you see this. So map, the output key value pair from the map is this, map 
text in writable. Reducer will emit in writable text. Okay. That means if it is running as a combiner, the combiner output will be in, in writable text, right? Now the combiner output will be go to the final reducer. So will this match? Are you getting it or not? Uh, no, sir. Could you please explain once again? This is mapper. Yeah. That's fine. This is reducer, right? Correct. Is this clear till now? Yes. yes sir. Okay. This is mapper, this is reducer, the first option. A mapper output is text in writable and in writable text. In the normal scenario, this is what do we match always, right? The key value pairs. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. You always match up the key value pairs. Now, a text in writable, normal case, this is text. This is int writable. Let me write it down. Text. Int writable. Okay, and this this will go as the same. Normal case, this is the thing, and then you have an int writable text. Int writable. Is this clear till now? Yes. <clears throat> Sorry. Correct. Okay. okay. Now, if this is the case, so it will work, right? Now, combiner came up, right? Combiner is nothing but what? Combiner is nothing but it's a local reducer. Okay, it's a local reducer. Which runs at the mapper side for doing the local aggregation. So it is not running on the network, it is running on the mapper machine. So here it says, okay, so text, so this will also come, right? The input to this will be the same, but the output from the combiner, this is my combiner. This is my mapper. This is my reducer. Okay, now this will emit text because combiner is nothing but a reducer. Text. Intritable, so intritable text. Now this intritable, it will limit intritable. Now tell me, text, right? Just one. Will this match? Is it matching? You will get a class no. cast exception. Is it clear now? Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah? So the first one option yes. will not work. This, let us talk about the third, fifth option. Text double writable, text in writable. So text double writable, text in writable. This is text. This is double writable. And then and it emits text in writable. 
the fifth option I'm talking about. Text in five double. Okay, and then this is acting as a combiner. So text in five double. So this is a text. This is an in five double. So there's a mismatch between the data types. Yes. 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 So the first and the fifth are not matching. If you see the third, text in writable, text in writable. So text in writable, this is a reducer. Text in writable, text in writable. Now this is also emitting text in writable. You can see that everything is a matching. Text in writable, combiner will emit. Okay, the same text in writable is what the reducer is expecting. That's fine. So what's happening here is this will work and this will also work. The trick here is if you want to see directly grill and if you want to identify the quick question. So these are the certification questions. So in the certification, if you receive this question and if you want to quickly identify uh, which of the reducer is acting as a combiner, so the input key should be equal to output key. Input value should be equal to output value. And the explanation I have given you, but this is how you can quickly identify. So I just see input key and output, sorry. Input key should be equal to output key. So I'm seeing input key and output key mismatch. So uh, state aware rule out. Text, here input key, input output key same. Input value and the output value are different, ruled out. Input key, input output key same. Input value, output value same. So this is the guy. Input key, output key, input value, output value same. So these two reducers can act as a combined. And you have to figure it out uh, if you can and uh, just spend one or one day that uh, you know, understand about these two properties io.sorted factor, io.sorted me, and then tell me that why the behavior command is like this. Even though you have set in your driver code that run my run the reducer logic locally uh, onto my mapper machine, but it entirely depends on the framework, depending on these two properties, whether it will run, it will not run, or if it is running, it might run more than once also. Now coming into interesting thing. So I'm not going to, uh, we will, we can see that, right? I can, I'll tell you in the code itself that how to do this, um, the hands-on exercise. But let us now go to the partitioner, which is very interesting. So if someone asks you where the combiner runs, so your quick answer should be it runs on the intermediate key value pairs of the mapper but someone asks you that where which is it runs on a because this is a very common question that in interview i asked everyone i ask everyone where does the combiner run they say on the reducer someone says on the network someone on say blah 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 which is like wow you have understood that it runs on the mapper machine on the intermediate key value pairs okay similarly partitioner i hope if you have gone through i have told you long back it's a single reducer problem. Right, so single reducer has a problem. And what is the problem here? That all the key value pairs from the, of all the key value pairs from all the mappers are going to be stored onto a single machine. Which means that single reducer machine, the problem with the single reducer. Let us assume that hard disk capacity of your reducer machine is 50, 500 GB. And the output key value pairs from your mapper, the sum of or uh, the size of IKVs, that is intermediate key value pairs from all the mapper. If it is very much greater than 500 GB, then your reducer will fail. Possible, right? The sum of the, the size of the key value pairs from all the mappers, they might exceed the 
hard disk capacity of a machine, which is, let's say, if you're running a single disk, they might they might exceed the hard disk capacity. They might exceed the capacity of that machine. And if your machines are of just 500 gig, so it, one, you know the attempts concept as well. If you have gone through the basics of the MapReduce, uh, when you have started, you know the attempts. So it will try to attempt on some other machine. It will try to run the reducer on some other machine. But then again, if you have all the machines with the same capacity, then your MapReduce job will never succeed. So how do we mitigate this, such situations? So there is a problem with your single reducer. And that's why I'll just give you a quick, uh, uh, in Hive, when you run the queries, like when you run a query, which is having an order by clause. So order by clause in your Hive query will always result into one reducer. Okay, and that's, that's why order by clause is not preferred in your Hive. Instead of that, you go with a sort by or cluster by sort by, cluster by, distributed by, those kinds of uh, clauses, which actually not run uh, one reduce. Okay, so what do we do in that case if, if you have such situations? So what do we do? We actually run more than one. That's the only, uh, the only other option is run more than one reducer and load balance them. For load balancing, right? You run more than run try to run more than one reducer to achieve load balancing. Right? Uh, you, so one question uh, I have. I was trying to just access few of the columns from one table, and I'm just querying uh, uh, some sample twenty records. So it was showing me reducer count was zero, yeah. but the mapper count was uh, pretty high, some around three thousand something. Yeah. So, so why the mapper count was so high? It depends on your parameters. Uh, how big is the table? Tab table was quite big, around 100 plus columns, but I was just so accessing size of, uh, size of the table. Size, size, I haven't so checked. Underneath, it is... underneath it depends on the size and the block size. Hive okay. will actually run lesser reducer than expected mapper. Mappers might run more mappers. Again, the same concept, you need to understand that mapper of Hive also has an input split size concept. So what is the block size, default block size in your um, uh, set in your Hadoop cluster? Uh, 128 MB. And uh, 120 MB, that means to say that you have too much of a data if it is running 3000 mappers. And since you're selecting the columns, so number of reducers are obviously zero, it will do everything in the mapper side. Okay. And number of mappers can be high depending on the amount of data you have, amount of the size of the table. And was it a, uh, uh, I just fine. I mean, internal or external table? It was, uh, it was, it must be managed table. Yeah. Managed table. That's your internal table, right? Yes. That's fine. You just check out the size of your data. So it would be very big. That's why it is running that those many mappers. There's okay. no other explosible explanation, right? You, you either select one column, two columns, or either select all the columns. It does not depend on the columns. Even if I select okay, thousand, yes. even if I select thousand columns, let's say if I have a hundred columns, but then my data side is one MB, it will run one mapper. It the mappers entirely depends on the size of the data. Okay. Okay, but I was just seeing some sample uh, values. I was not giving some bare clause or something. Uh -huh. So it, it, it is not like it, it shouldn't be like it's just uh, access some random values and then give instead of running so much of mappers. Um, uh, you need to understand that whether you want to access one or two records for whatever values you are uh, there, right? It has to run the MapReduce job on the entire data set. Okay. Yeah. So whether you want to access one record from the Hive, okay, so Hive has a two component, whether it works on the page, Apache page, or whether you're running a classic MapReduce. So Hive behind the scenes will run a MapReduce jobs, whether whatever query. For example, if you're running a select star from table T, it will not run the MapReduce job. If you run a select star from T, where column name is equal to X, then it will run the mappers, then it will start running the MapReduce job. The moment it has a where class, moment, moment you actually do a, some projection that is like selecting some columns and all, 
it will run the MapReduce job, but it will run the MapReduce job on the entire data set. So how, that's why I'm saying, how okay. big was your data set that it is, uh, that it is running those many mappers? If it is a small data set, which is less than 120 MB, pretty much sure it will run in one mapper. And also there are a couple of settings also in Hive, wherein you can say that I want to run uh, all the mapper. Okay, there are a couple of the settings where we have settings like um, I don't want to run more than this mapper. I would just want to run few mappers, 10 mappers to, but then when you are saying those configurations, then uh, that means the mappers will occupy or will run more data, will consume, will operate on more data. By default, one mapper will operate on one twenty MB block. So, which I'm making a calculation of a 3000 you are saying. So, so if I make a rough calculation, if it is running a 3000 mapper, three number of hand into 120 MB, the data size would be 384 gig. Is this big your data? I haven't checked that because we don't have a production access. I, could, I couldn't check. So I just uh, okay. asked them to provide me some sample data. The, then he told the me that this many mappers are running. <laughs> That's that's the only explanation I have right now. Because that is only okay. one. Okay. Now coming on to partitioner, as I was explaining, then partitioner is basically uh, you have understood what is a problem statement. But for other scenarios also, you might want to, not only this reason, but this is the main reason that uh, you might want to run more than one reducer for the load balancing of the key value. But that is a main a major reason. But that is not the only reason. When, wherein you want to run only one reduce or where you want to run more than two reducers. There are specific scenarios also, I will tell you, wherein you wanted to generate, you wanted to have uh, these many reducers. And I hope you, for example, just to tell you, one, one example is this, that wherein you have to mitigate this problem. The other scenarios are like, I want to, uh, before that, you know that number of output files is equal to number of output files. It depends on number of producers. Reducer. If no reducers are running, then number of output files is equal to number of mappers. So you know that general is number of output files equal to number of producers. And let's say uh, you you are working on Shakespeare data. If there is no reducers, then uh, the number of output files will be equal to number of mappers, right? Yeah. So let's say you are working on Shakespeare data, and the problem statement is segregate the segregate the data the entire Shakespeare data into even uh, into vowels or I would say into two parts or into two file into two parts into category one category should have all the words should have all the words starting with vowels and other category should have all the words starting with consonant. I wanted this. This is a problem statement given to you and I have explicitly stated here that you need to segregate in two categories wherein I mean that you need to have a two output files. One of the output files should have all the words starting with vowels. Another output file should have all the words starting with consonant. So when I said number of output files is explicitly two, that means you have to set the number of reducer tasks as two. Okay. Sometimes you might have another problem statement saying that you have an employee data, uh, employee salary data, and you want to do some kind of analytics. And the problem statement is to divide these salaries based on the month. So there are 12 months in a year. So in that case, you might want to segregate the salaries in the month wise, in monthly. So you will have a 12 reducers. So those are the actual scenarios wherein you will uh, run more than one reducer. 
but the actual use case actual motivation of running more than one reducer is like you have a single reducer is uh, there's a lot of burden on the single reducer in that case you might want to load balance the key value pairs by running more than one reducer but when you run more than one reducer so there is reducer one These are my older slides, that's why I'm drawing it, but my, I don't know why I'm not finding a new slide. Uh, let me search some. Okay, you have a um, one reducer. And then you have another reducer. Let's say, okay, before that, let us take an example of only one reducer. So in the one reducer, all the key value pairs will come to only one reducer, right? Yes or no? Yes. So you have apple, comma one, apple, comma one, apple, comma one. Okay. You have all the all the key value pairs coming to one reducer. Then output of grouping operation says that that uh, key and a list of values. So you have output of key of key operation, output of a grouping operation will be apple comma one comma one comma one. Then this will be the output of the reducer. Yep. And then you will say apple three. That's your output, final output. And you have calculated properly, right? Yep, if I have one reducer, all the key value pairs, grouping operation, everything perfectly fine. This is a grouping operation, then this is a final output reducer. Okay, now the case is different now. You're running more than one reducer. So let's say you're running two reducers. Okay, now you have a two reducers running. Do you want, in the previous scenario, of three apples? Do you want the apples like this? Do you want the keys? Apple comma one, one apple comma one coming here. Okay, let me make two apple comma one coming here. And here you have another one apple comma one. So when you do the final aggregation, you will have a two output files. In one of the output files, if this is a scenario, in one of the output files, you will see apple comma two. Another, you will see apple comma one. Do you think this makes sense to you? Is it good? Yeah, load balance is the key value pairs, but you are just load balancing it for the sake of load balancing or load balancing it. Then if someone asks you that what is the sum of what is the apple thumb, what will you do? You will read this file also, you will read that file also, you will read all the files. Let's say you have a hundred reducers ran and you have hundred output files and I wanted to have the count of apple, so you will read all the hundred files to see uh, how many apples have appeared and then you will do a final count. Would you like that? Or you want it? Boss, whatever you do, I wanted to have all the apples coming to only one reducer. I wanted all my apples to come to my one reducer, whatever reducers, what, how many reducers are running. What I mean to say is all the keys, same key should go to the same reducer. You're getting my point, guys? 
all the same keys should go to the same reducer. Are you guys following me? Hello or not? Yes, we are listening, sir. Okay, so all the same keys should go to the same reducer. That's the whole motto. Whenever you are doing, when you are running more than one reducer. So who will do this job? Because you need to understand the reducer is just a receiver of the key value pair. Reducer will not do anything. Who is sending the key value pair? Is a mapper who is sending the key value pair. So the sender has to appropriately send the key value pairs to the reducer. So the partitioner, 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 which runs on the mapper side, mapper side, decides which key value pair should go to which reducer. And how does it make sure? So, and it has to make sure the same key should, should go to the same reducer and it uses a very simple logic. And it has to make sure that the same key should a must go to the same producer and what does it do behind the scenes is very simple thing it takes the hash code of the key and it does the modulo operator by the number of producers you have set So what does it do? It def so the default partitioner, which is also known as a hash partitioner because it works on the hash code. So it takes the hash code of the key, do a modulo operation by the number of reducers. Modulo operation is nothing but the remainder operation. So when you divide three by two, three divided by two, then the remainder is one. When you divide, uh, so modulo, modulo operation, you need to understand x modulo n x that is your what is a divisor right or dividend x modulo n the value will always be between 0 to n minus 1 that means whatever x modulo 2 x modulo 2 the value of the remainder will always be between 0 to 2 minus 1 is 1 x modulo 100 x modulo 100 or x modulo 100 the value will always be between 0 to 100 minus 1 it is 99 and x is your number hash code number so if any let's say you have set the number of producers so i hope you by this time you know that you set the number of producers before submitting a map of this job so let's say the number of producers are number of producers are 3 and some key is coming let's say the key is your hello or let's say we have taken apple and the hash code of the apple is 20 i'm just taking an example it's a 20 so 20 modulo 3 20 modulo 3 would be 2 the remainder is 2 so this apple and whatever the value it will go to the reducer 2 if some other key value pair is coming, which is a, uh, which is has a hash code of 18. So 18 modulo 3 will be 0. So that particular key value pair will go to the 0th reducer. That's how the partitioner is uh, uh, designed. Uh, that's how the partitioner will make sure that all the key value pairs will go to the same reducer. And the default partitioner is a hash partitioner and this is how it works. So let, oh, I have given an example here. Number of producers are 3. And let's say you have a key as a hello whose hash code is 30. The key hello and its list of value will go to the 0th reducer. 30 modulo 3 is 3. Similarly, world 31 modulo 3, it will go to the first reducer. Okay, now based on this, I would like you to do the, I would like to solve this problem statement. And this is a problem statement wherein I want to just segregate. So this is the problem statement 
and I want to segregate all the vowels, all the words which are starting with vowels to one file, and all the words which are starting with consonant to the, to the reducer side. And I've just told you the partitioner works on the key, right? Partitioner works like hash code of the key. Hmm. Not by number of producer. We have to we don't have to change it, but how can we make our existing reducer? Sorry, how can I change my existing logic to do this? Have I given this problem statement? I don't think so, I believe. But let's say now, now this is the problem statement. So I want to have a two output files part hyphen r zero zero zero. So because two reducers will run, so let's say the zero. So this our part hyphen r zero zero means that output is coming from zeroth partition of the reducer. That's that's the meaning of your parts file. Parts partition r output r means reducer and the zero five zeros means zeroth partition. Zeroth partition. Of the reducer. Similarly, if you have a part hyphen r hyphen four zeros one, it means that output is coming from output is coming from first partition of the reducer. Now, so the zeroth output file, let's say I wanted to have in this file, I wanted to we wanted to have. I have all the words starting with vowels, and here we wanted to have all the words all the words starting with consonants that's what we want okay so how do we do that this is our problem statement and so the very whenever any problem comes, I have that there are two step process which you know. First, I need to determine the output key value from a mapper. What should be your output key value pair from your mapper? Output key value pair from mapper. What should be that? Right, and then you have to draw a quick diagram to understand. So I will make output key. Any ideas? Text. So Text okay, that's fine. I will give this uh, as a assignment. So do this. Uh, do this as an assignment. Take this as an assignment if you can do it. Just tell me what should be output key value for the mapper, and and that's that will solve your problem. So you are saying text. What does the text represent? Text in text intradible intradible text output key what what is this text yeah output word key. word so i wanted the word in this file the output should look like this apple one word apple elephant no count i don't want any count okay if there are two apples coming it's okay here some words are starting with okay something like this so now tell me output key output value from mapper any guesses your yeah, output key will be text text means and what? output value will be null intractable open the mapper Output key, tell me guys, output key, I'll make it as a zero for the word starting with vowel. And one 
for the words starting with consonants and the output value will be the word whatever word so the uh, so if it is a word by name apple so the key value pair key value pair for this word will be zero comma apple if there is another word by name elephant then the key value earlier we started that uh, huh? the record is a line number right of course we are dividing so that simply if the record is a line we are breaking the line into words i am iterating over each of the words and i am taking each of the word and making and i am comparing whether it's a vowel or a consonant if it is a vowel it will be uh, the key i will make it as a zero and the word as apple itself do you think why i am doing it anyone would like to take a guess then if it is a let's say another word bar so i will make it as a one comma bar foo one comma foo anyone would like to take a guess that why i have done like this i wanted to have a two reducer that is sure right that is perfectly fine now to one of the reducer zero reducer i wanted to send words which are starting with vowel now hash partitioner because when you run more than one reducer your partitioner comes to picture partitioner will take hash code of the key and do a modulo operation by number of reducer right number of reducers i will express it as 2 because i need to output files now what is the hash code of zero will will be zero the hash code will be zero of zero will be zero so zero modulo 2 will the answer will be zero one modulo 2 the answer will be 1 which means that these two key value pairs <coughs> will go to which reducer this two reducer will go to zero reducer are you guys following me and these two reducer will go to first reducer the reducer number 1 and output of the output of any reducer would be i'm mean output sorry the grouping operation at the reducer would be key let's say i'm talking about zero reducer the output operation is zero reduce grouping operation <coughs> at the zero reducer would be zero comma apple elephant all the words are starting with all the words are starting with the vowel so so in the reducer so in the reducer you will just iterate over the um, words and then emit it as is so the value will be null writable so i hope this is clear guys so this is how you will decide so just by Uh, with the normal, so you you have seen that right? Partition. That's the one use case of partition here. This is clear to everyone. Now it's a matter of writing the code. I'll make another package. Com dot frame dot vowel consonant. New class vowel consonant mapper. Extends mapper.
assuming it's a text input format so i am not specified so text input format would be long writable text text and what they wanted to pass as per my this thing inflatable and text this would be inflatable and text override the map override the methods so source right click source override implement methods i will say map method okay and now what you want to do here is you want to text value so string split them string splits equal to value dot two string dot split i don't have to i believe i don't have to take you again that what we are doing we are just converting the value to string object as java string and then splitting onto a word boundary then iterating over the words for string words colon splits so what you are iterating over the words in an array okay and to reusing the object i'm just saying a few member variables of my class private inflatable zero equal to new new inflatable new inflatable new inflatable zero ready private inflatable one new inflatable just to specify as i've told you right i will have a zero and one so i'll say private inflatable zero one for string words comma splits i would don't want to count the words the spaces in between so i will have a one check words dot length greater than zero i just want to check only those words which has which are not spaces so just to i write it don't count spaces avoid spaces to avoid space you can do that now once you have the actual word which has some then you need to get the first word right to calculate whether it's a um, whether it's a vowel or not so string uh, first cat first cat equal to words dot substring substring zero comma one and once you do that you get the first character then you have us okay i will also what i'll do i'll take it uppercase dot to uppercase so that it is we don't segregate between upper and lower cases and then i'll say switch switch case first cat only jdk 7 supports the switch case on strings i mean starting from jdk 7 not do that so case a case e case i for all these cases case i case o case u for all these things my output key value pair would be context dot write zero and the value will be the word right i can say new new text of word and if it is a vowel sorry if it is a consonant the word would be consonant the word is consonant the word is coming default so word is consonant then you will say instead of zero it will be one that's it your your mapper is done now corresponding user would be right click class vowel consonant producer extends from the different class and let me see what is the input key for this so inflatable text is a output key value pair so it this will be an input key value pair for map for reducer into inflatable text 
I just wanted to output the text, the text, and this I don't want anything here null writable because that was my use case. Right click source, you override the reduce method. Okay, it will act as automatically given me this key values just in the variable names here context. So you have all the words coming. So you say for text, for text word colon values. You need to emit each and everything. Con context dot write word null. That's it. And your and your reducer logic is done. Correct. So that's done, guys. And the la la the last part would be to use this. What do you say? To create our XML file. So I will just copy paste vowel consonant XML file. So you know. So in the next class, I will run it to see uh, the output vowel consonant class. And we will quickly. Okay, job queue name is fine. This is also fine. This was manager uh, map class, right? So the map class is vowel constant mapper for so right click select your class right click copy qualify name and Paste it here That's your map class Similarly, okay and Vowel so we will also change the reducer class name I think I have to give Wait a minute. I will take up the from the word count because it does not have the reduce of one. Uh, again, I write it. That's the only challenge. Okay. So I will change me. I will change. Okay. Job name. So job name. Uh, what you want you give? Vowel consonant job. Job class name. Uh, select your class, right click, copy qualify name, vowel consonant, and that's your mapper. I will write the reduce over here. And number of reducers, it has to you have to be careful, it has to be two now. Only number of two reducers are this. Output key class from my mapper was int writable. Okay, int writable. Output value class, it's it's a text. Output key class from my from my reducer is a text, but the output value class from my reducer is a null writable. Input format, text input format, input directory, input data, output directory. I can give vowel consonant output, vowel consonant output. That's it, and we are done. So this is how we're gonna in the next class we'll see we'll run our map with the job on the cluster to and see that it has it will take two output files one of the output file will have the words we're starting with vowels another output file will have the words starting with vowels uh, sorry consult right so that's all for today guys and in the next class we will see the distributor cache passing the parameters map side job. okay thank you